this happens. We started with just three simple images of three different dogs. And after the augmentation, this is what we get. So we run the code, we get the same dog rotated with a fine transformation, with higher contrast, with some blur effects, and all for these dogs. And you can see, Hi, welcome to this new video tutorial. My name is Sergio and I help companies, students and freelancers to easily and efficiently apply visual recognition to their projects. We're going to see today image augmentation and how this technique is powerful to improve our custom object detector. It means that if for some reason the detector is not performing well, with the image augmentation we can dramatically improve the custom detector. At the beginning on this video, we're going to see how it will work and what is the concept behind the image augmentation. And second, in the second part of the video, we will see how from scratch we can implement image augmentation using the EMG AOG library from Python. So if you're ready, let's start. Uh, to explain the idea and the concept behind image augmentation, I want to start with some really simple sample. Uh, I took the image of a dog, actually I have a few dogs, just three dogs. And But let's suppose that we have a lot of dogs like these that we have in these images. And we want to create a custom detector to detect dogs on an image. If we give to the custom detector deep learning model only dogs which are just frontal and just horizontal like this way, it will be able to detect only this kind of dogs. To give you an idea, if you, to the detector after the training, give you, uh, give this kind of dog, just because the dog is rotated, it will not perform well. It will not be able to understand that this is a dog, but it's just rotated. Also, if you give an image which has a slightly different colors, it might have some problem to detect them. So image augmentation, it means applying a lot of filters which will perform in different way, uh, rotation, they will perform some zoom, zoom on each image, they will cut some part of the image, uh, they will change uh, the brightness of the image, they will change the color of the image, and so on. There are so many methods and filters that we can, that we can apply, but we will uh, mostly, the most common use are just five or six. So we're going to see only the most common and I will also give you some reference on how to uh, find other methods. Now that you know the concept behind this, let's start writing the code and let's see how to apply image augmentation. Before starting writing the code, we need to have a library which is EMG AUG. So first of all, if you don't have that, you need to install the library. So we open the terminal on Windows, we type CMD and on Ubuntu, Linux or on the Mac, you need to open the terminal uh, similar as I'm doing on Windows. And then we need to install the Python library. How do we do that? We have a simple command, pip install EMGAUG. And then after this, we press enter. This library requires a few dependencies like OpenCV, NumPy, and a few other libraries which need to be installed. If they are not installed, don't worry, they will be installed automatically with just this simple command. So just to know that if you don't have them, it might take a while for the installation. I have everything already installed, so that's why in my case, all the requirements are already satisfied. Once we have the library and we are sure that the library is working, we're going to import this library, import emg aug dot augmenters, because that's what we're going to use right now, as IAA. So this is just to make the name shorter as it's, it's too long to repeat the same name over and over. And this is the standard way that it's used. Now, I'm not going to use this library right away. I'm just going to run this one to make sure that this library is installed correctly. So if you run this and you don't get any error, it means that the library is installed correctly. 
If you get any error, you need to find why you haven't installed the library. Now, the second thing that I'm going to do is to import the images that I have right here on the folder. So as I told you, I, I have three dogs. Of course, I'm using the dogs. You can use multiple images of your data set. Uh, if you don't have any image, you can just download all the files and the, uh, and the things that I'm doing right here from the link on the post blog below. Now, I will start loading one image and then we will move on from that one. So emg equal, equals cv2.im read. Oh, I forgot to import cv2. So we, we need, of course, to import opencv, so import cv2. OpenCV is the library for image processing and manipulation, and we need this to just load the image. cv2.imread, what do we want to read? We want to read the image, which is on this path. Images, images, and then dog.jpg. Now, to make sure that we are loading the image correctly, let's show this image on the screen. cv2.imshow image, what do we want to show? We want to show EMG. Now, a wait key event to keep the image on hold. cv wait key zero. And now let's run this one. And here I have the first image of the dog. Now, consider that we, we have multiple images in one folder. We want to load multiple images because our data set, it can be never just one image. We have we need to have a lot of images. So instead of loading the second, like this way, mg, mg2, and then the second image this way, we can put, we cannot put one line per image. So we're going to take all the images that are in that specific folder. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to import glob. This library is going to give me the path of all the images. How do I know that? We can say images path equals glob dot glob. We want to find all the images that are on the folder images. So we say all the files dot JPG. So all the images in JPG format. If I print this one images path, we should get all the images that are on that specific folder. So you need to put your path. I have three images, so I'm going to get just three links, one link per image. Once we have the, so let's call this one, one load data set. Once we have this, what is the second step? I mean, it's still the first step. Uh, let's loop through them for EMG path in images path so that we can load them one by one. So EMG path, instead of the just single path, we're going to put this one on that it's on the loop. So let me show what we're going to get right now. So EMG, uh, we have the first image, the second and the third. And that's all because I have only three images. Once we have these images, let's put all the images into one array so that later we can load them with the EMG LG uh, library. Mm. Uh, well, how do we do that? Images, we need to create an empty array images. So at the beginning, it's empty. Each time we load an image, we're going to put the image inside these images. So images dot append uh, emg so we take all the path of the images we load them one by one right here we extract them once we have one by one we put them inside images one by one and then we can move further we have all the images into one array now let's move to the image augmentation so I know that it took me a while before getting straight to the point of image augmentation, but I couldn't skip this one because you know how, you need to know how to properly load the images before performing the augmentation. Otherwise you can get lost if you have never done anything like this. So that's why I took some time for these lines just there. Image augmentation. 
Now, image augmentation, it starts this way. Augmentation equals IAA dot sequential. Right here, we need to put all the methods for image augmentation that we want to apply. Now I'm going to skip this step. Now let's show the image so that in real time we can know, we can see what is really happening there. So we can go on three, show images. Now I'm going to again loop through the images so that I can show them now normally as they are right now and then we will see the difference when we apply the augmentation. How do we do that? Uh, well, we can do, uh, the idea is to take that they are stored inside images. So if I do cv2.imshow, uh, imshow here, we can put the, the name of the window, it doesn't matter what we call, let's say image. And, and then what do we want to show? Let's show from images. Let's show the first image. And now a wait key event to keep the image on hold. cv wait key. This, we need always to have this one on OpenCV when we show something. If I show this one, uh, that's the image that was stored in images. If I show the one with index one, uh, we're going to get the second image. If I show index two, we're going to get the third image. And of course, we can loop through them. So we can do for EMG in images in images, then let's show EMG. One, two, and three, okay. Now the idea will be to apply here different in this space, augmentation methods, and later that we can see them in real time. So we apply the method, we run the code, and we can see in real time what the method is doing on the specific image. And to do that, let's start with just some methods that can, that does the augmentation. Uh, we are going to use some method. Let's now just rotate the image. EAA.rotate. And with the rotation method, we can give a value which starts from minus 30 to 30, which is this one as default. Let's now see what this one is doing. So if I run this one, still you don't see anything because we are just loading the images, but we're not applying the method. So let me show why. We load the images. We have, we define an augmentation, the augmentation here, and then we're just displaying the images, but we're not applying the augmentation to the images. So that's why we don't see them. So. Let's now apply the augmentation. Actually, we can do that right here. Uh, augmented images equals to augmentation. And then where do we want to apply this augmentation? We want to apply it to the images. So images equals to images. And now instead of displaying just the original images, let's display the augmented images. And let's run this one. As you see, right now we have the image. So each, uh, each image that we see right here is rotated. And how does the rotation happen? Well, it's uh, pretty much random. So if you see, it goes from the values that we set, in this case was from minus 30 to 30 degrees. Uh, let's, uh, this was just to test this one. Uh, let's try a different example. I'm going to use the uh, five most common augmentation methods. The first one is the flip. Flipping the images, it means to just flipping this one either horizontally, like this, like the mirror effect, you just flip everything this way or vertically this way. So how does this work? I A A dot flip. Of course, we have horizontal flip, which is flip L R. 
LR. And let's apply this horizontal flip like this. So if I go to the original image, so let me find the original image. Okay, so I've got here the original image. Now you can see that this image has the flip effect. So it's mirror image. And the same is for the other images that I have. So you see here is the dog. And we have the horizontal flip and also for the other dog. What is this value? This value is the percentage that needs to be applied on the images. So generally we wouldn't do this flip always, but commonly is done only 0.5, so half of the time. Otherwise we see the image always flip on one side. It doesn't make sense. So we need sometimes the normal, sometimes it must be uh, mirrored, flip and so on. So if I run this one, we might see that now, for example, it's flip, but sometimes it just original as it was before. And we can do the same with the uh, vertical flip. IAA dot flip UD, this is the vertical one, and we can also do for this one 0.5. Uh, let's make sure that we add a comma each time after this. Okay, and then let's run this one again. So as you see, in this case, we have the vertical flip as well. Not always, so I'm just running this again. Okay, in this case, we have the flip and all these methods are applied together. So it can happen that we have at the same time the horizontal and also the vertical flip. Then we have the affine transformation. So everything that regards uh, the affine transform. So we have different methods at once uh, where there is the translation on of the image on the uh, X axis on, on the Y axis. Uh, we have the rotation, which is included in this method and uh, something else which we will see. So let's make two affine, then IAA dot affine. Uh, let's start now with the translation on the axis. And let's do tra translate percent. Now, how does this work? We need to put a dictionary and then we define X for the X axis and we can choose the translation on the X axis. I'm going to put some random values and later we will adjust and explain why and what this does. Let's start from minus 0.5. Uh, minus 0 0.5 to 0.5. And if we run this one, you see that we have the translation of the image. So it's moving on one side, like, like this, of from minus 0 0.5 to 0.5. So it's random. So, so from half of the image to plus half of the image. And by default, the values used are from 0.2 to, to my, from minus 0.2. So from 20% of the image on one side to maximum 20% of the image on the other side. So here is from minus 0.2 on the left side. And then when it's on the right side is uh, 0.2, like this one. The same is on the Y axis. So we do also, we add Y and then point uh, from the same minus point two to point two. Like this. Then a fine on a fine we have also let's P we have translation, now we use translation percentage from point two to uh, from minus point two to point two, so 20% of the image, but also we have the translation in specific pixels. So in case you have some specific object where you have a definite uh, number of pixels, you might use this different method, most commonly is not used uh, with pixels. Then now rotate, so let's also apply the rotation. So rotate 
uh, rotate, we need to define some degrees, let's say from minus 30 to 30 degrees. And let's run this one. And here we have, of course, random rotation. So the same object can be detected by the deep learning, no matter what's the rotation, like this way. Uh, of course, we don't need to make uh, like uh, 360 degrees rotation because we have 30 degrees rotation, but also we have the flip, horizon, uh, horizontal flip, vertical flip. So if we put the flip plus the rotation, it will already have <laughs> much more angles than minus 30 to 30. Uh, then there is another one. Let's check among the ones that we have right here. And we have also the scaling. So scale, scale, let's make it now from 0.5 to 1.5. So here we have either it shrinks, so zoom out, or we have some zoom in with the scaling. So this is really useful to uh, train the deep learning neural network to adapt with different size if, uh, sizes of the same object because you give, even if you have some standard size on, on your data set, this is giving a huge variety of sizes. And so this is enough for the affine transform. Let's go now to the third really common method, which is the multiply. Multiply has one specific purpose. It's multiplying what? The channels. So it means that it's going to either make the image brighter or make the image darker. IAA dot multiply, multiply. And we need to put also in this one some limits. So from by default, we have from 0.8 to 0.2 to 1.2. So from 0.8 to 1.2. And let's run this one so you can see. Of course, let's put always a command between each method, otherwise we get an error. It's making either the image brighter or darker. Probably you won't see that right here because you don't see that much of a difference. So let's increase the values just that it's clear what is happening and then we will put them back to standard from let's say 2.7, 1.7. So you can see how bright now this image is and also this one now it's bright, probably too much. And that's why we will change later. We'll put some standard values, but I wanted to show how this works. And now it's really dark and are all dark and bright. So the default standard from 0.8 to 1.2. Now third method, uh, no, fourth method, linear contrast, linear contrast, which has one goal, increase the contrast of the image. IAA dot multiply, no, uh, linear linear contrast. Also this one, we go with the stand, the standard is from 0 0.6 to 1.4, 0 0.6 to 1.4. Let's put a comma before that one and let's run this. And this one is increasing the contrast. Now let's go with the last one, which is the Gaussian blur. Ga Gaussian blur. So the objects might, might have some blur. So uh, for example, when you are working with the camera and you take some picture, the object that is on the foreground is uh, we focus while the rest is blur. So if also your data set contains some blurring, it means that it will improve also the detection on the objects that are out of focus, which will be detected as blur object. Gaussian blur, let's add, um, first of all, comma, 
before the previous one and i a a dot gaussian blur and here we go also in this one with the standard values from 0 0 0 0.0 to 3.0 And there is an, an extra method, I will go with the last one, which is not a method, but, but it's um, to make it blur or only sometimes. So we can add I perform, let's say, uh, perform methods below only sometimes. I A A dot sum times and how often do you uh, do we want to uh, make them we can say half of the time so 0.5 the more you increase this one the more often these methods are performed the lower of course the less the least they are performed so that the blur is applied only half of the times and let's run this Now, one last thing that I want to make to give you an idea of how the deep uh, neural network will understand this when training is that I'm going to put everything right here on the show on a loop. So while true, and everything will be on a loop. And also we need to put the augmented images inside the loop. So the idea is that now, when I run this one, we will see these images not stop. So after the three images are displayed, we load again a new augmentation and we will display again the three new augmented images again. So this happens. We started with just three simple images or so three different dogs. And after the augmentation, this is what we get. So we run the code, we get the same dog rotated with a fine transformation, with higher contrast, with some blur effects and all for these dogs. And you can see that there is no real limit of how the data set can dramatically increase using this method. So if your experience is a problem with the deep learning custom detector, this is one way that you can use to improve it. And of course, this was just one of the methods to improve the custom detector. Of course, there is much more to it when you want to make some project, especially if it's some professional project. If you are interested in more advanced stuff and if you are a beginner, you want to learn properly how to apply and create custom object detector from scratch, I recommend to check my courses on pysource.com. This is all for this tutorial. See you on the next one.